Welcome, folks, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu. Now, I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and a creative business. Today's guest is Zach Arias, an Atlanta, Georgia-based editorial, corporate, and commercial photographer. You may also know him as a visionary behind One Light Workshops and DeadPixel.com. He's also an author and speaker. In fact, Zach will be speaking at Silk Inspire, a wedding photography festival from October 6th through October 10th in Goa, India. Welcome to the show, Zach. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Good seeing Zach, you. Yeah, good seeing you too, man. I know we go way back. Uh, we, we were just talking before we uh, started recording. We met at uh, a One Light Workshop in Boston. I can't even remember the date. It's been so long ago. Wow. 2005-ish, 7-ish, something like that. Uh, so yeah, we've known each other for about no, almost said ten, ten years. Um, it's exciting to be to, sp- to be speaking with you again because uh, you're going to be coming to the this, this wonderful festival in Goa, India. This is going to be a second visit to India. Uh, the first one was to Mumbai, I believe, and yep. you were there to do something for Fujifilm, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Correct. It was. Uh, I did a promotional video for the launch of their X Pro One in Mumbai. Oh, wow! Excellent. And okay, I can't wait to get back to India. There you go. Thanks. Yeah, there's a lot to photograph in India for sure. But you're there to be speaking and teaching a whole bunch of us about one specific thing, which is your main sort of the the thing that sort of launched your career online, perhaps. Would you say the One Light Workshops, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yep. So, so talk to us. Talk to us a little bit about your experiences uh, in India in the, in the past and what you're expecting in at the, at the conference. Uh, well, just my personal experience uh, going to India um, in Mumbai was, I mean, all senses were overloaded, and um, it's just absolutely the most fascinating place I've ever been in my life. And I can't wait to go back. And I'm excited to see Goa. I'm I'm hoping that if my schedule allows, I'm going to be able to spend some extra time in India. And I'd love to go back to Mumbai. Um, and um, but I'm really excited as well about heading to Goa. I've heard so many great things about um, that area and region and city um, in India. So um, me being a dude from America, like it was just the the culture just blew me away the people were amazing and the sights and the smells and the you know from good to bad um in india uh there you walk around one corner and something takes your breath away and you walk around another corner and you're heartbroken um and it's just like that block after block after block after block and you know all the people live there and are on top of each other going in all different directions and being an outsider you you like it you look at the city of mumbai and watch all the moving parts and pieces and people and you wonder how anything gets done but it all just works and it's fascinating uh, to me just and absolutely fascinating to me so indeed it is an amazing country uh for for all those things you just mentioned uh the the thing that's going to bring you to India the next time around, which is in, uh, for the for the Silk Inspire Festival, is your presentation. Uh, one of the things that that when you first told me about your presentation, I was like, well, hmm, it's a wedding photography festival. So what would a portrait photographer be doing there, kind of thing, you know? But you have a long history of photographing weddings. I mean, you've done lots of weddings before you decided on honing in on just the editorial portrait market, right? I have yes. Um, <clears throat> I you know started my career many years ago. I was working towards becoming a commercial editorial photographer. Failed at it miserably. Had to leave photography for two years. Um, and it was one. Of, there's a saying that photography calls many but chooses few. And I thought it had called me but never chose me. Uh, and my dear friend Mark Climey, uh was shooting weddings here in Atlanta, and I was just working a job at Kinko's at the copy shop and um he's like i'm shooting weddings right now zach and it's i'm busy and i need a second shooter would you like to come shoot weddings with me and weddings was 
was something I, I never wanted to shoot before. That was, that was not on my radar. Um, but yeah, you know, like it'd be cool to take pictures again, I guess. Like, yeah, I'll, you know, come second shoot for you. Uh, so he bought me a Nikon D100. Uh, this was in, uh, 2003, I believe. And shot my first wedding with Mark in October on a Friday. And that next Monday I put my notice in at work, said I'm quitting. Like I felt like I'd been underwater for two years and someone grabbed me by the collar, lifted me up and let me breathe again. I loved shooting that wedding. Um, I loved being a photographer again and I had to make it happen. So I second shot with Mark for seven years um, and shot a lot of weddings with him. And um, so while I am not coming to Silk as a wedding photographer, I no longer work in that space. Right. Um, I'm I'm coming in to talk about, you know, the technical foundations of lighting that that are going to work, whether you're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer or, you know, heck, even if you shoot product photography, you still have to deal with inverse square law and you have to expose properly. And um, so I'm bring in the one light workshop, which is, um, you know, the foundation of lighting kind of, uh, workshop to, uh, Silk Inspire. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I am too, because this would be the third time I'm sitting in, uh, and watching and learning from you, uh, back in Boston. The reason I signed up for your, for your one day lighting workshop is that I think it was really about learning and understanding how to use light. I had no idea I, you know, I, I was scared. I, was, right. I mean, to put it bluntly, I was just freaking scared to do what was, you know, what shouldn't have scared me, which is just, you know, push a button and see what happens kind of thing, right? And right. Uh, it, this is this is part of how I think all photographers, they all start off at some place. And this is something I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing what you say often, I think, which is, you know, all photographers start somewhere, you know, and you just have to go, go from there. And uh, right. that, I, I took that, to heart, and um, I can't get enough of lighting now. Like I, I am, I'm, I'm a lighting nut, you know. Yeah. Any any opportunity I get, I bring my lights out, you know. And it is thanks to you, man. Really, honestly, you you inspired me to be a better photographer because you sort of took away that technical hurdle away, and you made it easy for me to like analyze first and foremost what is required, and then move on from there. Uh, so thanks for doing that. I'm 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 just excited for all the people who are going to be at this festival who can actually sign up for your course because this I don't know how they're going to structure the the workshop. I don't know how many people are going to be able to sign up for it, but uh, they're all going to win. <laughs> I know oh, that's how okay. I feel about it. Uh, what else are we going to be able to get from you in terms of your your vision for the industry perhaps uh tell us a little bit about what you're thinking about what's happening uh in the photo industry right now would you be able to give us some ideas um well i mean the photo industry is vast and broad and you know there's i don't know in one way you look at it and you you feel like it's all falling apart yeah. like it's a race to the bottom and everyone's just trying to do it faster and cheaper um, and everyone's got a camera and everyone's a photographer these days. And you can take a very cynical look at the industry, you know, and it has changed. Um, it has changed immensely. And I know people who had 15, 20 year long careers who had to shut the doors because they couldn't, they, they just got overrun, you know. Um, and then I know people who are opening studios. Um, and the thing that I don't want to do is take the cynical approach uh, that everyone is out to get you that, that we're all, you know, when people start to tell me, you know, they say, Zach, it's, um, it's just the market is oversaturated. And I just kindly look at them and say, well, you're part of that oversaturation. I mean, <laughs> if you're, if you're in a swimming pool that has too many people and you're saying there's too many people in this pool, you're in it. Yeah. You're in it too. You know, well, you know, and I've had people tell me, well, it's only because of the advent of inexpensive DSLRs that, 
you know, all these people think they're a photographer and do this now. But because of inexpensive DSLRs, I got a second chance at being a photographer again and have been able to build a career thanks to inexpensive DSLRs, you know. Um, and um, there's, there's just new paths that we have to find. Um, there are people figuring out new things to do um, that photographers 20 years ago wouldn't have done. I mean, uh, there's a guy that I follow on Instagram that just <clears throat> travels and takes pictures and puts little books together and sells those. And, and he just is hacking his own photography career together, um, not with client work or anything like that, just doing it and finding people who find it interesting and you know um and so you know i love photography and i invite anyone who wants to to come into this industry to come in um who am i to say that you can't be a photographer who am i to say now are there some standards that you know maybe you should meet technically yeah you know um you've got to learn about customer service and you you know, you do need to learn that what you do has value um, and that you can't be a cheap photographer forever. You can't sustain a life. There will be a point that you have to raise your rates. You know, um, if I were to start shooting weddings today, there's, you know, no way in hell I would shoot a wedding for five hundred dollars. You know, I, I, I wouldn't do it, but I would realize there are plenty of people out there shooting weddings for five hundred dollars. And there's a market for that. There are people who are getting married who don't have any money, you know, and $500 is a whole lot of money to them to be spending on any kind of pictures at all, you know. And we can all say, well, it's the most important day of your life and it's this and it's that and, and you should really value it more. But if you don't have $5,000 for a wedding photographer, you don't have $5,000 for a wedding photographer, right? But there are clients that do have $5,000 for a wedding photographer, you know, and – they are not shopping for a $500 photographer. And that's the thing, <clears throat> you know, I try to try to discuss with people of like, don't worry about the $500 photographers. They're not in your market. They're not going after your client. You need to just concern yourself with what you're doing and where you're going. You need to work hard and you need to, you know, persevere. Um, and there's always been competition. There's always been somebody that can show up with a camera and either do a better job than you or do it for less money. Um, so I don't want to be cynical about it. Um, has it been tough? Yeah. You know, have I lost jobs to cheaper photographers? I have. Um, but you know what? I've gained jobs because I wasn't the cheapest photographer. Um, I, I once had a band come to me. So this band came to me and they wanted to do a whole press and promo photo shoot and album artwork and all of that and gave them a bid and it was too much money. And um, they got another photographer to shoot it. Um, and this was uh, like a family portrait photographer and great family portrait photographer, but photographed the band as though it was a family shoot took them to like a local park put them in the gazebo like put them on the little arched bridge over the creek like you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, like boy. you know if you're trying to do something satirical perfect yeah, right you know? Yeah. <laughs> but you don't take a fucking rock band and put them on the little arched bridge over the creek at the municipal park you know and oh. shoot them at four o'clock in the afternoon right and those were the pictures they had and and they went back, um, you know, to the management that was working with this band, and they're like, what the, "What the fuck are these? Like, we can't use these." And who'd they hire? Me. So they came back to me, you know, and I shot them like a rock band. Like they needed to be photographed, and they loved the process, and it was great. And you know, I didn't back down from my price a bit. But I tell you what, that was probably from when they asked for a bid. So when they finally hired me was probably three or four months of time, you know, so, um, 
you got to keep yourself busy, you know. Absolutely. Um, one thing that st- strikes strikes me, I guess, when when I talk to you is that uh, having known you for about almost ten years or more now, uh, you've been very active on social media. You've actually used social media to great advantage. Would you agree? Um, has that yeah, helped I mean, you? Has it helped you in your business? Social media has definitely helped me in my business. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a social media like guru. I I almost I'm probably horrible at it because I don't have I don't time my posts to hit at a certain time, and I'm not like super consistent with it. Um, but I also don't spam the world you know kind of a thing i i'm a believer in that social media the key word is social and i think some people handle social media too much as a platform to broadcast from um and that's not very social you know um for me it's more like walking into a coffee shop and pulling up a chair and having a conversation with somebody, you know, or someone calls me over and says, Hey Zach, can you look at this? What do you think? You know, Hey, did, do you hear about that new flash? What do you think of that thing? And, and so, um, so social media has been important for me, um, for client work. Um, I've networked. Um, um, it's, uh, I got Land Rover as a client because they put a call out, um, looking for, they wanted photographers, um, to do a social media campaign for Land Rover social media sites. And they were, they were looking for non automobile photographers and someone saw that tweet and they tagged me in a reply. And then I replied back to the Land Rover social media team that began a discussion and I did a three day shoot for them. And then that built the relationship and I continued to do work for, for Land Rover for a couple of years. Um, so, and that all came from Twitter kind of a thing. Um, I, the, the best job <laughs> that I've had uh, this year was being, playing a photographer. You remember the old, uh, you remember the old uh, soap opera uh, Dynasty? Yes. All right. Like Falcon Crest, yes. Dallas, Dynasty, yes. Yes. right? Well, they are rebooting Dynasty. Uh, CW is bringing back Dynasty. And it's being shot here in Atlanta. And they were shooting the pilot. And they needed a photographer um, to set up like a high-end engagement shoot with like lights and a tethering station. And, and they wanted a big camera and, and all of that. And I got the job. So, and I had a speaking part too, so I can get like a SAG card and I can get a like IMDB credit and all of this stuff. So I had a speaking part on, on Dynasty playing an engagement photographer. Fantastic. Right? And let me tell you how I got this job. I was uh, at a bar some months ago and struck up a conversation with a couple that was just sitting there at the bar. Um, I probably had like a camera with me or something. We started talking about photography. We traded Instagram names. All right. They started following me on Instagram. Then the girl is friends with a producer here in town and they were having lunch one day. And this producer says, you know, I've got to find a photographer around here um, to play this part. It's like, oh, I just met this photographer. His name's Zach. He's on Instagram. Like, here's his Instagram feed. And like, um, she's like, oh, my God, I think. Yeah, let me reach out to him. So she reaches out to me and it's like, do you want to play a part? You know, it's like, yeah. So. I'm on Dynasty <laughs> because great. of because of Instagram, there right? You go. And yeah. um, it was a paying job, and they rented my gear. And what's funny is my gear made more money than I did, um, <laughs> but it was a really good job. And then I got to be on a movie set or you know a TV show set all day, and yep. and I got to have, you know hang out with all the stars in the you know the speaking star area, right. and uh, so it was great. And all because of social media. Fantastic. Now, this has obviously helped you stand out. I mean, the kind of work that you put out, the kind of tweets you, you publish, uh, the, the Facebook posts, uh, the Instagram posts, these are all things that you are 
whether intentionally or naturally just sort of sharing with the world are things that help you stand out in, in the industry. Uh, would you agree? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't like turning the mirror on myself, you know, that much. Mm. You know, well, I do this and I do that and it's help. Like, but, you know, I just, I just want to, if I can help people out and if I get to share the stuff that I'm doing and I, I get excited about and, um, where does that come from, Zach? That idea that you got to share things with other people. Because so many people have shared with me, like so many people have helped me out in my life and my career like i would not be here if it weren't for all the other people behind me and whose shoulders i stand on um and i'm not going to be here forever so i've got to get other people up onto my shoulders and um you know i have so much respect for those who've gone before us and and i I try to remind people of that. Um, you know, I try to I try to stay positive and stuff. But I've gotten into a few you know Twitter battles with some other photographers, and the biggest one I ever got into um, was because they just were discounting the old way of doing things, and those old traditional photographers just didn't know it anymore. And and this is the new way of doing things and it's all going this way and and don't worry about that anymore and i'm like that is our history that is the foundation and the shoulders that we stand on and we need to respect that you know 80 year old guy with a hasselblad because he's been shooting pictures since before you were born and you know when people start complaining about the autofocus isn't that fast or you know there's too much noise at iso 6400 I, i'm just like Go shoot a wedding with a Hasselblad 500 that, you know, focusing it is like steering a bus, you know. <laughs> That's right. And you have 12 pictures before you have to change the film back, you know. Yep. And you got to get it done. And when you leave, you don't know if you got it. And ISO 400 was like low light film, you know. <laughs> you right. might push that to 800 in processing. Like – there, you know, Avedon had no autofocus. Um, there, there was no autofocus. Uh, masters were using ISO 25. You know, there are National Geographic photographers that were shooting Kodachrome in dark bars. You know, uh, with manual focus, manual exposure, ISO 25 slide film, and creating epic, award-winning National Geographic photo essays. So don't tell me about your awesome camera that gets a little noisy at ISO 6400 and can still autofocus, right? right. And it, it's, <clears throat> it helps. If you know our history, it helps you to slow down, you know, and go, wait a minute. You know, I, I can't complain about my equipment here because people have had less and have done more. I have so much at my disposal right now. Let me slow down. Let me figure this out. Let me get creative and let me find a solution, you know. Um, and I think it comes from respecting our past that it it gives you that. Otherwise, you're like, this is stupid. I hate this. I need to go buy that new camera. I'm going to buy that new camera. I'm going to switch from Canon to Sony. Well, you switched from Nikon to Canon and now you're Canon, you know. And, 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 and you're chasing gear and chasing gear and I got to have the new camera body and I got to have – oh, I got to have this many things and I got to have this now and I got to have that. And it's – slow down. It's going to be OK. And and make it happen with what you have. You know. Last question for you, Zach. I know we've talked for over 10, 15 minutes now. Last question is this. Um, before we started recording, you'd mentioned about – Again, the idea that we are here for a certain amount of time on this planet, and uh, you use the words, you know, making your mark. So, what is it that you'll be known for? Uh, how are you going to be making your mark? Um, or how would you want to be known for making your mark? This, this. Okay, I'm going to try to say this without crying because this usually makes me cry. Um, I set this goal for myself when I 
like 13, 14 years ago when I got a chance to become a photographer again. I wanted to shoot the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. All right. Um, I want to shoot the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. That That's like my Mount Everest um, that Rolling Stone calls me and says, Zach, we got a cover assignment for you. You're doing the cover. I've made it, right? Um, here, Here's where I think my life is going to play out is I'm never going to shoot the cover of Rolling Stone. I'm never going to get that assignment. Um, it's not that technically I don't know how to. Um, it's not that I'm unable to network myself to that level. Uh, my book, Photography Q&A, has the foreword written by the senior photo editor of Rolling Stone magazine. It was almost like, well, if Rolling Stone's not hiring me, I'm going to hire Rolling Stone. Um, I love it. But this <laughs> this is what's going to happen, man. This is – it's going to be a Mr. Holland's opus for me. I'm going to get a phone call one day or an email or someone's going to come up to me and shake my hand. And they're going to say, Zach, um, my name is so-and-so, and I watched your One Light Workshop video years ago, and that set me on a path. And I just – I want to thank you because – I just shot my first cover of Rolling Stone magazine, you know, and and I'm I'm learning to become okay with that, you know. Um, I of course want my photography to stand for me in my place when I'm gone. Um, I have a goal of I want fifty pictures that I am proud of that could be my body of work when I die. I'm probably three pictures into that <laughs> body of 50. Um, so oh, I have like yeah. 47 left to make in my life. Um, yes, yes. But I, I've gotten so many emails and uh, letters and stuff that people thanking me for putting myself out there for for um not putting up i i don't want to put up smoke and mirrors like hey i'm zach arius and i'm shooting all this awesome stuff and i'm so great and you need to follow me and like look how awesome i am and man look at all my clients and look at oh this is me getting off of a private jet like you know and this life that like God, he must be a millionaire and he's hanging out with Madonna. Like, I'll never be that. Like, no, I'm a guy that gets depressed. I have three kids. Like, um, I have to, like, vacuum puke out of the car and, you know, and do the dishes and take pictures. And I hate my work sometimes. And um, it's difficult. But listen, you got to get through that and you need a technical foundation. And let me help you with that. I can help you. You know, that's the one light that I'll be doing at Silk is lighting is intimidating. I know it is. I've been there. Um, let me help you get over that intimidation. Let me help you get to the point where you realize that this is how this works. This is how you expose for it. And then how you can apply that to your life in weddings or portraits or whatever you're shooting. And I guess when I'm gone, you know. I hope to have helped as many people as I can um, that that they in turn will then go in and help others, you know, and we'll just become a succession of people standing on our shoulders, you know. Fantastic. Zach, That'll uh, be all right. Thank, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, a very inspiring Thanks, message. Um, you know, uh, here's, here's how I see you. I see you obviously as a photographer. Yes, you are a photographer, but... You're, you're also a teacher. I mean, this is who, you're the one who taught me how to use Flash. I mean, so I see you more of a teacher. And as teachers go, your your motto for just sort of passing it on is is truly, truly amazing. So thank you so much for, for spelling it all out for us. I look forward to seeing you in Goa. I uh, can't wait. Yes, <clears throat> it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going we're gonna to hang out and... You know, maybe this is, I can check off on my list of things to do. Carry Zach's bags off of my <laughs> list. 
<laughs> what do you think? Uh, uh, so I, I look forward to it, man. I really, really, this is amazing. So thank you. It's it's so exciting. I'm sending my passport off this week to get my visa, and um, I really I'm kicking myself for not getting that 10 year visa back then. But um, I've I've learned my lesson. So I will see you in India, and I can't wait. Awesome, man. Take care, bud. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.